everyone, Bernard here, I hope you're all staying safe and well and welcome to the Citizen Channel and we're going to have a look at a player today, a player back in time that uh, I did watch fairly when I was quite young though so I've not uh, any specific memories but obviously he was certainly on the pitch uh, in the first season I started to go to Main Road in 1960. 566 so it's uh, quite special I like doing these where the players that I've actually would have seen in the flesh as you, as you like uh, <laughs> or, well certainly most of the home games I, I didn't obviously start going to away games to the early 70s but uh, yeah today we're going to have a look at a player that's only with City for well only it was from 1965 to 69 about four and a half seasons in total uh, but he had a few problems obviously of course you know from the thumbnail anyway we're going to be talking about of course uh, Stan Horn today who uh, obviously was born on the 17th of 12th 1944 I think he still lives in I think he lives in Berry the last time I, I sort of heard he's sort of been on City fans minds quite recently but we'll talk about that as we look back at him anyway so we're going to have a look at this the Stan Horn our players in time today feature is uh, Stan Horn. Please, if you're new to this channel, push that subscribe button there, push the notifications if you enjoy what I do. I do these history vlogs, I do city current stuff, uh, quizzes, uh, magazine vlogs, lots of different things. So if you can, uh, if you're not subbed already, if you can do so, that'd be great. Or if you know any city supporting friends, please point them in my direction. I'll be very grateful. And of course, if you look at the playlist, there's loads of stuff on film and TV as well. I have a, I'm very greedy. I have a film and TV channel as well, which uh, that's my other love film and uh, film and TV drama, etc. So. Please check that out. We always need a break from football occasionally. Well, I certainly do anyway. I thought we live and breathe it, don't we? But uh, it's nice to watch a good film or a good TV drama. So please check that out as well. Or if you know anyone who might be interested in that channel, please point in my direction, even though they might not be interested in this football thing. So that'd be fantastic. Of course, uh, loads here on the football. So if you're not overly bothered about the film and TV, just stick with me for the football stuff. And if you need any followers or friends on Facebook and Twitter, uh, please seek me out. Uh, there's a couple of links on the screen. And I do check every three or four days and follow and friend everyone back on there. And all comments are welcome about Stan Horn. Uh, it's nice to get these, do these history vlogs and get comments on people who've seen him or, or wish they'd seen people or seen certain games when I do a history on a game and stuff like that. So please leave your comments. If you've got time to leave a comment, if you can just give us a thumbs up, it's great. I mean, I've tried to get between about 20 and 30 thumbs ups for these city, city vlogs, please. Uh, it's nice to get views, but it's nice to get thumbs up as well. So that'd be much appreciated. Yeah, so Stan Horn, yeah, he was uh, with Joe Mercer, of course. Uh, I've done sort of a couple of features on him quite recently as I'm recording this. Um, and uh, he was at Aston Villa. And it was with one of his one of his first signings when he joined City. Obviously, Joe Mercy knew, knew what he had, and he brought him to City for the nineteen sixty five sixty six season. The uh, it's interesting when you look back at some of the pen when they do these little reviews in the away programs and they give little comments on players, and it's always sort of mentioned that Stan Horn sort of had. Uh, Left left football because of this high blood pressure problem he had at Aston Villa. But obviously, as far as what we can see, Aston Villa cancelled his contract because of this high blood pressure. I don't think he willingly left football. And obviously, as soon as he had a chance to get back into football, he did. And he's still kicking along now. So, hey, couldn't have been, couldn't have been that bad, could it? Let's be honest about it. But, yeah, his contract was cancelled by Villa because of this high blood pressure. But uh, he wasted no time in contacting his old boss, Joe Mercer, once he found he was taking over at City. Uh, and he went for trials a month of trials with City I think he was signed on after about three weeks I think there may be something on that later as we go through a couple of articles uh, it became of course he was the first black player to play for Aston Villa and of course he became the first black player to play for Manchester City at that stage and he was a tough tough tackling midfielder um, he normally played as a number four Obviously, the right wing back position at the time, a certain Mike Doyle was also sharing that sort of duties as well. Uh, but he also played as a number three, and even occasionally as a number five. So yeah, he was he was all around there. I mean, I've seen recent interviews, obviously, about the this all the racism and stuff like this, and he, he's very he's very philosophical in that. In that, uh, obviously, because of his 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 upbringing, he was used to that sort of thing. You know, I'm obviously I know. Horrible thing to say, isn't it? But you do get used to it. And he was a big lad, you know, he didn't mess about and he, he took, he gave back as much as he got. And it interesting to see, I mean, we'll look at an article later on about the fans, but he said it was more problems on the pitch than with the fans themselves because obviously there wasn't many black players playing at that stage. So obviously the fans weren't overly, overly uh, racist as such, if you like. Probably worse now than they were then, to be honest with you. And, you know, not, certainly not been educated since, have they? But, uh, 
Yeah, it was the players, and if you're a tough tackling, if you're a tough tackling defender or midfielder, yeah, you're gonna get a stick, aren't you? Whatever, whatever colour you are, let's be honest about it. So, yeah, he doesn't ever bang on about the racism side of it because he just got on with it, and that's that's the sort of working class lad at that age, I suppose. I mean, it's a horrible thing to say, but yeah, they just just got on with it, and uh, I have noticed one or two interviews where he doesn't really play on it at all, which all all credit to him, absolutely fantastic. He made his uh, team debut in the League Cup match in September '65. Ah, this one here, the Leicester City, Wednesday 22nd of September 1965, uh, a 3-1 win against Leicester in the League Cup, and he made his league debut just three days later on the 25th of September 1965 against Derby County, and another one, and a 1-0 win this time, uh, this of course was City's... Uh, he was obviously going to make City's uh, first season back in division in the first division was 1966-67, which was his second second season at City, and he actually went on to make most of his appearances that season. Um, it was a tough season, but obviously his battling qualities were very much needed to sort of get us through, and we survived uh, comfortably in the end. Obviously, it didn't look uh, obviously 66-67 season didn't look sort of cut and dried at any stage whatsoever until quite near the end of the season when obviously uh, City managed to survive that year but of course there was uh, prior to the 67-68 season we had a small feature on Stanholm in the brand new brand new Manchester City magazine that was being sold outside the ground uh, with praise for him and obviously optimism going forward uh, so I'm going to just have a quick quick read of his little piece in that obviously I've got the magazine there might have been an image up there as well Stan Hearn deserves uh, a lucky break and he's the the comments in here at the age of 22 wing half Stan Horn could look back upon a remarkable season considering they had come to Main Road on a month's trial and finished up a first division player Stan was at Villa Park under Joe Mercy won a Central League Championship medal had four or five first team outings and the road to soccer fame was paved with promise then the blow fell the doctors advised him to quit the game because of high blood pressure well, Stan was determined to prove that doctors can be wrong. In August 1965, he signed for City. After three weeks of his month's trial, Joe Mercer said we should be signing up before the end of the week. They are fantastic. Great if Joe Mercer says that about you. I mean, Joe Mercer didn't even fancy Colin Bell, so there you, there, there's an interesting point. Stan had played three reserve games. And he clicked in his first league outing when City beat Leicester 3-1 in the aforementioned League Cup game. Come March 67, and manager Joe Merce was making another pronouncement about Stan Horn. Credit for his improvement must go to our supporters. Confidence has made Stan a better player. Uh, and the supporters have given that to him. We hope Stan continues to improve and that the fans continue to give him their support after his fight against the odds. He deserves all the luck he gets. Yeah, so I mean, obviously he was part of that. Uh, second division title winning team. It's interesting to mention the supporters there, wasn't it? And let's face it, we've always had, um, we've always not not quite taken to play. As you think back to the Bert Troutman time, when a German coming to play for City, but uh, we saw. I think I think the City supporters had a reputation for being fair to these guys, and I think that sort of, even even in sort of it sort of beat about the bush a little bit, but it was sort of saying that the supporters had taken to Stan Horn and obviously given their support. And I think from when Stan Horn's interviewed, I think he sort of backs that up with the things he said. So. That was really interesting. Nice, nice little piece, obviously, in, in that uh, magazine. Of course, the 67-68 season uh, was going to was was going to be a momentous season for City, wasn't it? But uh, unfortunately, not for Stan. Yeah, an Achilles tendon injury was to prevent Stan playing more than a handful of games that season. Uh, Jerry Harrison, who used to write the City News and Views for the programmes, uh, constantly uh, had mentions of uh, Stan Horn in, in his program in the program notes before the game. It was interesting to read, obviously, the early, in the early before Christmas, obviously, um, his actual last game was going to be West Bromwich Albion on the 30th of December, which is this this programme here, a bit battered, so I've seen better days, uh, but that was going to be his last game on the 30th of December 667. So, yeah, I mean, in, in, 60, in March 68... Um, Jerry Harrison had commented on on Stan Horn's Stan Horn's um, real bad luck. He went on to say in the, in the program notes for this uh, for this program in March '68, uh, Stan Horn's troubles are double. For some time he has been troubled with an Achilles tendon injury. The treatment prescribed by the specialist is rest for something like four or five weeks. While he's forced to take this layoff, he will go into hospital to have his tonsil, tonsil tonsils out. So he's all, not not only the uh, his, his Achilles, but obviously his uh, his 
his uh, Achilles tendon injury, but he, poor, poor bugger had to have his tonsils out as well. At least he could have some ice cream, I suppose. That wasn't too bad, was it? Uh, this is bad luck for Stan, particularly with such a tense period of the season coming up. Yeah, this is obviously getting to the crux of the 67-68 season, but obviously... He, he he had been struggling. Yeah, I say he hadn't he hadn't actually played since uh, the first of December '67. Um, uh, let's hope he makes a quick and complete recovery. So yeah, I mean he was mentioned there in the March '68 thing. I mean obviously his final game in that game against West Brom was unfortunately a two 0 loss, which which isn't great, was it? But uh, then then obviously we look forward to the '68 '69 season after the joys of winning the '67 '68 season. You look forward to the '68 '69 season. Um, uh, the playing staff. He was recovering from, obviously from a major operation by then. They'd actually decided obviously to to have the operation. I think he was in plaster. I think he mentioned he was in plaster in an interview uh, at the Newcastle game away. He was actually obviously not able to play. Uh, obviously he was he was in tra or traction or in plaster certainly for that game. So he missed that. So he had an operation on his Achilles tendon. And interestingly enough, in uh, nineteen sixty eight sixty nine, where he didn't actually play any games for City, there were always regular updates in the program. So Jerry. Jerry Harrison continued to give us little updates on it. Uh, so obviously we go to the 17th of August 68 so early in the season the derby game against United uh, Jerry Harrison writes Stan Horn who's had his share of worries and injuries lately is making steady progress in C2 ward of Withington Hospital remember Withington Hospital yeah I do uh, after his Achilles tendon, oper tendon operation he was in some pain after the operation but was cheered by visits from other city players let us hope that this operation clears up Stan's problems once and for all. So that was 17th of August, 31st of August, 1968 against Ipswich. It's only a couple of weeks later, so we, we know what he's up to. But, uh, we, you know, the, the club were always willing to give him a mention and sort of make sure he was still there in the fans' thoughts. Uh, on the 31st of uh, August, 68 against Ipswich. Stan Horn, this is Jerry Harrison again. Stan Horn, though, can't look forward to much action for some time yet. After his Achilles tendon operation, which is a painful one, not to mention depressing for someone whose life is football, he will be in plaster a month before he too gets down to rehabilitation. The plaster encases the leg to the knee, and although the City players aren't seen as much of Stan as usual, his progress is very important to them, as well as the club in general. So there you go, see, so they're still keeping in touch. He moved to October, 12th of October 1968, uh, against Tottenham Hotspur that, uh, that, gay, that, that year. Not the one that was the Bally on Ice, Ice was a year before, but uh, yeah, again, Jerry Harrison has him in his notes. Uh, one man not in such a cheerful mood is Stan Horn. This is October, so end, uh, middle of October 68 now. Uh, the City Harpack is still out of action. In the programme on Wednesday, Tony Book told what it was like being out of action for so long. Yeah, Tony Book had suffered an injury as well, and that's why we sort of struggled at the start of that 68, 69 season. Much the same applies to Stan who had yet another appointment with the specialist this week. Things haven't gone well for Stan up to this point. He's recovering now from the skin graft operation which was a, was a follow up to the Achilles tendon operation. He has stayed in his digs which are within shouting distance of the ground and has ever been able to have and has even been able to have treatment. Time and rest up to this week would have been his only cures. It wasn't exactly a tonic either when he and some friends went by car to a City away match and the engine blew up. It's a very lucky guy, Stan, wasn't he? I mean, I wonder if he ever did a lottery ticket. He would have just wasted his money. And the City away match and the engine blew up. But on the cheerful side, Stan had been able to buy means of television to sharpen his undoubted skills on the horses. There you go. Mm, only bet what you can afford, Stan. Uh, everyone looks forward to the time when he can give more people in the club the benefit of his tip. So, yeah, he was laid up there. So you could talk in October 68. But uh, by Christmas, by uh, December, the 21st of December 1968, there was a slight glimmer of hope in the notes that last, you know, from all this depression. Uh, Jerry Harrison wrote, Heading back was the was the sort of title. Club skipper Tony Buck and Stan Horn were due for a run out in the city team, which marked the switching on of the floodlights of that famous amateur club, Crook Town. Yeah, heard of them. Uh, we hope they both get the thumbs up sign from the doctor after their tryout. So it was it was back on the pitch. So that would be fantastic. Or expected back on the pitch, but sadly. It wasn't to be, was it? After that brief uh, thing, he never quite made it back to that level. Uh, and he obviously, even though he's in and around the 68, 69, sulking in his, no wonder, sulking in his, in his, his home nearby, etc. He never quite made the level required to play for the first, make a first team comeback for City. And he actually moved to uh, Fulham in 1969. I mean, in total for City, he made appearances. He made 48 league appearances, two as substitute. In the FA Cup, he made 11 appearances. 
appearances. In the League Cup, he made four appearances, one a substitute. So a grand total of 63 full appearances and three appearances as a substitute. Yeah, the 67-68 season, which obviously has caused a consternation, which we'll talk about in a moment, he made actual four full appearances and just one substitute appearance. So a total of five. So obviously that's significant, obviously, in itself, isn't it? He actually also turned out for Chester. He went to Chester, play for them, as well as Fulham. Denver Dynamos, which apparently enjoyed very much over in Denver, fantastic place, he, he thoroughly enjoyed that, and he finished off at Rochdale, where actually I'd love to ask him, he actually scored five goals, so perhaps uh, he never scored any goals for City, so perhaps he was pushed up a little bit at, uh, at uh, Rochdale. In an interview in 2012, uh, conversations with Stan Horn, with, with Ben, a Newcastle supporter for a, for a vlog uh, site on the internet, he was asked about City's trophy wins after he left. So after, obviously, the 67-68, we went on to win the FA Cup, the League Cup, the Cup Winners' Cup, etc. I spent four and a half years at City, he said, winning a Division 2 medal and playing a part in the title-winning side of 68. He did. I suffered a bad tendon, Achilles tendon injury that year, which curtailed my appearances. I knew when I left they would go on to win more trophies. Didn't we all on the best played played again played with he said I would have to say obviously no doubt is that I played would have to be Colin Bell he was phenomenal and the best player he played against uh, well he, he commented on George Best that he was a pure genius he stated that post retirement the only club I've involved with is City they have been fabulous we are always welcomed at games and throughout the year there are various functions and golf days which are great fun Career highlight, well, probably winning the old second division title, he said, with City, which enabled to play them, them to play back in the top flight again. There's a couple of comments from City supporters. John Dutton commented on this article in uh, July 2012 and said, I remember Stan Horn well from his playing days with City. He was a tough tackling player who gave all for the team. He was held in high regard by the fans and it's a great, it is great to know he still has a strong bond with the club. Long may it last. John Newton also commented on November 2019. Stan was a superb player for City and one of my heroes from that second division winning team. I was wondering where he was when he popped up on an Ian Cheeseman Forever Blue vlog recently. Good to see you doing well, Stan. So yeah, I've got some information on that later on. October 2020, of course, we had the latest news there. There was attempts to get him a League Cup winner's medal now, uh, retrospectively for the 67-68 season, because obviously people who uh, made five appearances were entitled to a medal, obviously at the expense of the club, which I'm, for, I'm sure about 300 quid, I think it is. I think City were well willing to pay that. So City were now trying to redress this situation after being made aware that the Football League had fallen into line with the Premier League by granting medals to any players featuring in five games. So he played full, full games four full games and one a sub don't forget so that's his five um, he commented at the time it's nice to know the club haven't forgotten to hear City are working on behalf of me and the other players who missed out on a medal is great if I am given a medal even after all these years I will absolutely treasure it oh, absolutely fantastic of course he would um, hopefully he'll get a medal soon as I'm recording this at the end of March 2021 I don't, there's not been any further news on that I've sort of scoured various sites etc I can't see anything else on that uh, Stan, of course, still still supports City. Still, comes. he's an Oxford lad originally, born in Oxfordshire, but uh, he still comes to City games. He's been he's appeared at City Square as well and uh, the Tunnel Club. So always have a look out for Stan because some fantastic things. Uh, as I said, there were some interviews. There's a link on uh, there's an interview on Within Short FM. I'll do a link. There'll be links below in the comments. Please check those out. There's obviously that Ian Cheeseman blog. I found a little like a two two and a half minute piece on him that. Uh, commenting about the medal, uh, 67, 68, possibility of a medal. So I'll do a link to that. And the Two Unfortunates website, which was that interview with the guy, the Newcastle United fan, uh, I'll do a link to that as well, which uh, was an interview. So, yeah, there's no doubt that uh, I don't think anything. I think looking back, as I say, it was a, I was a bit young to know fully at the time. But there's no doubt, uh, apart from that Achilles trouble, that he would have remained an integral part of the City squad. That was the sort of player we needed, didn't he? As I say, it's that number four role that Doyle made made his own. Uh, perhaps Doyle was a bit better at scoring goals, but obviously uh, Stan had a knack for that, didn't he? We found out later on in his career. But, hey, there you go. That's another story perhaps we'll have to delve into. No one's asked him that. Well, uh, Stan, if you're listening, mate, get in touch with me. I'd love to do a little interview about that. Um, 
So yeah, he did remain an integral part of the City squad. He was still thought about by the players, still thought about by the fans as well. I mean, you know, you, you could see that. And uh, what would have happened 67, 68 if Stanley had been playing uh, more games? We don't know, do we? Uh, we don't. Who can tell what would have turned out? But I'm sure he would have. We would have. We would have still won and perhaps done even better. Who knows? But uh, yeah, as I said, I did have the opportunity to watch him live, and although he's often forgotten, isn't he? Although as I said, this, this news about the medals has brought him back into. City City fans consciousness over uh, the last few months or so I think there's still a lot of affection from him for City and I think still a lot of affection from older fans to him as well and obviously you only have to read these things and appreciate why to be honest with you and so I think uh, let's hope that medal wings its way back to him very soon so there you go Stan Horn thanks for watching this little player in time feature uh, on Stan Horn who, who was at our magnificent club and was a magnificent Brave player, I think, uh, considering all the circumstances uh, from 1965 to 69. Anyway, thanks for watching. Whatever we're going to do with the rest of the day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More important, let's all look after each other till we meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Or perhaps have a flit across and look at my film and TV channel. Whatever it is, all I ever ask of you, don't forget, is please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.